In the previous section we created registration, login and social feed pages in Angular. In this section we are going to create API for these functionalities so they work together. Specifically we are going to create API for registration, authentication and managing social feed. In this video we are going to create API for registration as well as we're going to wire Angular form so it works with our backend. First, we'll set up MySQL Docker container and our user model. Then we'll add register method to our authentication controller which is going to be created in PHP. At the end, we're going to wire up Angular form so our registration really works. We're going to begin by adding registration to our PHP project. First, we need to add JVT auth to our PHP project. To do that, we need to exec into our container so we have access to bash. Now we have access to comments like composer. So, we're going to need that to install JVT package. First, we need to install JVT auth develop for our project. We're going to install the latest version because the latest version is compatible with Laravel 5.5. When JVT auth package has been installed, we need to add provider to our providers array in config slash app.php file. Here we need to add provider from our JVT auth providers for Laravel. Now we should add aliases for JVT auth factory and JVT auth. Now we need to generate a secret key for generating our JVT tokens. Please see that we're using PHP artisan JVT secret command. We are asked if we are ready to invalidate all existing tokens, but we are creating this first time, so we're obviously sure we want to do this. So our secret is generated. Now in app slash HTTP kernel PHP file, we're going to register new route middleware. So basically we're going to register JVT auth and JVT refresh middleware for our routes. Now in our routes app.php file, we can create our register route. Previous routes aren't going to be useful for us. So let's create new route here. And uh, this route is going to be called register and it's going to call auth controller register method. Now we should generate auth controller. So we can go into our workspace directory command line. And here we can run php artisan make controller and the name of controller, in our case auth controller. Now in app http controllers, we can see our controllers. Some of them were generated in our first video while when we covered Laravel. So basically we can remove the old ones. We can also remove home controller. At this moment I would also recommend clearing routes in web.php file. Now in our newly generated auth controller we need to add register method. One more thing before we add our register method in auth controller we also need to change get to post here. As MySQL 8.0 is still a development releases and personally I've had a problems with using it, we'd go with stable MySQL version 5.7. So we're editing .env file in Laradoc directory. When version is changed in our Laradoc directory we can run docker compose rm mysql and then we can run docker compose build mysql.
when docker image is built, we can run docker compose up the MySQL. Now when MySQL container is running, we need to run migrations. So let's go to workspace container. And here let's run php artisan migrate. Our tables were created successfully. Actually, there's only one table for now, users table. I've created register method for our auth controller. First, we need to import hash, validator controller, and user model. Then, in our function, at the beginning, we have some validation rules. For now, our validation is going to be really simple. We just want the name to be unique and required. We want email to be unique and required. And obviously, we also need a password. And then, later, we pass user input to validator. We also pass rules to validate this input. If validator fails, we send success equals false message with errors. However, when validation succeeds, we proceed and create user in our table. We also create a hash for our password. At the end, we send success through message. We can test it using Postman. You can run PHP main admin container and then you can log in into users table in our default database that our Laravel application is using. For server, we need to type MySQL for username default and password is secret. Then we can inspect our databases in PHP MyAdmin. So now we can check table users and we see it's empty. So now let's go to Postman. And now we can test our endpoint. The URL is localhost slash api slash register. So first we try to execute request without any parameters. We can press send. And we can see we get errors as well as we get success equals false message. But we can provide parameters needed. So we can type some name. Email. And we also need to password. And now we can press send. And we can see we get success through message, which means we have been registered in our application. So we can check if it's true in our database. This is our database. Let's refresh this view. And we can see we got uh, our first user such name and email and hashed password. So seems like registration succeeded. This is our register form in our frontend client. Currently we can see that we have different fields. For example, here we have first name and last name. So in our form, in the backend side, we can adjust the parameters that we accept in the register method. So now, in app user PHP, let's change fields so we have first name, last name, email, and password so it matches the front end form. So, first let's change name to first name and let's also add last name. Now we need to change our migration so when it runs, it's going to add the first name instead of name and also last name. And here we need to modify our auth controller register method. We're going this to be a first name. We won't require it to be unique, but we're going to require this property. So users at least need to input first name. Next, we're going to add the last name. Although we need to accept last name, but uh, we're not going to validate it at this point. So here we're going to validate first name. And here we need to change uh, appropriate fields, name to first name. 
OK, so our register method should be ready now. So now in Laradoc directory, we need to rerun migrations for our Laravel project. So we need to enter our workspace container in Docker. Docker compose exec workspace bash. And here we need to run php artisan migrate rollback. So we roll back our previous migration because we've changed our first migration. So it's rolled back and now we're going to run migrate again. And we can see our migration is ready now. So now we can try to execute our new register method with first name and last name. Let's make sure everything works here. So let's remove this additional spaces. Let's save this request. And we see we're sending first name and last name. So let's press send. And we can see we get a success true message. Now we can check this in our PHP my admin. A first name and last name are correctly stored. And we can see in our database there's a first name and last name now, so everything runs smoothly. And I think we're ready to go with the registration form. I think it's now ready to be compliant with frontend requirements. So here we need to adjust frontend to send messages like Ajax requests to correct endpoint and host. Logic for sending register requests is stored in auth service. Currently we're passing whole user object, but let's split it so it's compliant with how our API accepts it. So we need to send first name. So it's going to be user first name. Then there's last name. Then we have obviously our user email. And last but not least, we have password. So now let's test it. For testing, I'm going to keep my developer tabs open so we can see if request succeeds or fails. And let's type here first name, last name, and the email. Let's press register. And we can see request was fired, but it was fired to the wrong host. So was fired to localhost 4201. So in our auth service, we need to add our API host. So this service is sending requests to the correct API. So in our auth service, let's add constant, which is going to be backend host or backend domain. And let's specify our backend domain with the protocol. And now we can create method called, for example, build URL, which is going to accept path as parameter and return backend domain and path. Here we're going to use this build URL as well as we need this here. So now our request should be prefixed with correct host. Let's try this in our application. So here we can press register and we see we fire a request to the correct host, but now we see we get options request only and there should be another request, post request. So there's probably cross origin issue. Yes, we can see this that we also need to add cross origin headers to our Laravel project. So it's going to accept connections from our domain, which is now for me localhost 4201. To add course, we need to install Laravel course library. Laravel course has been successfully installed. Now we need it to our middleware in app HTTP kernel. Here, in the app slash http slash kernel php we have property called middleware and we can paste it here this fragment of code which is uh, required to configure properly course in this application and now we need to publish config from this package so we can edit it and add our domain there
So here we're going to run PHP Artisan Vendor Publish and the service provider of package that we've just installed. So we can see our course config has been successfully created. Let's go to this file. So here we have our cross origin settings. Here we can leave asterisk as it's going to allow all domains or specify just our local host here. So basically at this moment we can try clicking register again. And we correctly get two requests. Yes, yeah, since we haven't filled anything we get errors. But for now let's just go to happy path and uh, fill the fields that are required. Maybe let's keep this network tab open. So yes, here we type username, email, and a password. And we press register. And we can see we get success through message. So it's great because our payload has been successfully correctly sent. So now if we try to press this again, we should get an error saying that email is not unique. And uh, yes, we get exactly that error, so it's great. So basically our task for now, for example, show some alert message if registration was successful or if it failed. So for now we're going to return this promise from this register method and then we're going to go to the point where this is used, so we can press find all references and it's referenced here in submit handler of our register component, so let's go there. And here let's declare this method as asynchronous and here we're going to have a result. And basically we need to check if response was successful, so we can run this like if response success then let's alert success for now and uh, otherwise we're going to alert failure so let's go to application and see if it works so here let's uh, try to use uh, user that has already been registered so for example let's type contact plus one email which already has been used and let's press register and we get failure message which is correct because that email has already been used and now let's try to use some email that hasn't been used yet so, and let's press register and we can see we get success message if we click again, we get failure. So basically we have working registration in Laravel and Angular. In this video, we finished our registration for our project.